It's Ian Cleverdon here and welcome to another bonus episode of Half Hour Mentor. This time, Neil Pearson, founder of artist management and market development business Sounds Just Fine, is in the hot seat. If you haven't listened to his fascinating journey through the world of music business management, then do go back and have a listen to the main episode. I subjected Neil to some quickfire questions at the end of our main interview, as I've done with most of my guests in this series, which focuses on the creative arts. Just to be clear, he had not heard these questions in advance, and the only edit made was to remove the silence before he answered, which was his thinking time. Let's have a listen. Question one. What do you think is the best song ever written and why? So that my answer is could be likely to change in whatever mood I'm in. But if I'm thinking songs that I keep going back to and love and I find something in it every time I go, I would probably pick Bob Dylan's Desolation Row. Why? The imagery, the madness, the great hook and tune, the way it ebbs and flows, the fact that I don't really have a clue what it's about, but I've got every clue what it's about. It's always delivering something for me. Great. I was hoping you weren't going to mention one of your artists then, so then you'd uh, cheese off all the rest of them. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Question two. You've been given the power to change one thing about the music business. What would it be? The perceived importance of digital streaming services such as Spotify and the, the way that people use that as a measure of success or otherwise. It is a totally viable income stream for many artists, but as a measure of anything else, I don't think it stacks up. Someone could have 100 million plays on Spotify but can't sell a ticket. So the fact that lots of venues, promoters, the Arts Council, funders, using that as a measure of anything for me. And I I could equally put in YouTube plays. I could put in any number of those metrics. I don't think they should be ascribed the importance they have. Uh, Question three. What's the most common question you're asked about as a manager of artists? How How do I make more money? How do I become more successful? How do I get more Spotify plays? Uh... And these are the things that people see. Or how do I play to more people? Uh, And these are all part of a big picture. You know, they all kind of feed together. When you get those questions and an artist wants to be, be more developed, you go right back to the start and say, right, what are you doing? Where are you playing to the most people? What are your plans to go from here to there? And if you go back to the beginning of that and start looking at, right, how do I develop it sequentially in an organized way, all those numbers will follow in due course. Trying to hit any one of them on its own is madness. What's been the funniest thing that's happened to you working in the areas that you do? I've worked with some artists who have been quite diva-ish around riders over the years. I'm a, as a, as a concert, I put still put shows on in Shrewsbury. I book a venue in Shrewsbury. And I've been around enough musicians and enough tours to just kind of see the madness in riders. But yeah, I have seen some, some behaviour which I'm sure the people involved wouldn't want repeated around hissy fits and riders not being correct. Go on, give us an example without mentioning names. Uh, I've seen white wine sent back, A, because it's not the right white wine, and then sent back because it's not being chilled. You know, this is is the folk world. This is not rock and roll. This is kind of the folk world. Uh, Possibly the most ridiculous thing that ever happened, which is probably a better story, is... The, the most ridiculous thing was trying to do that gig in Calcutta because we were trying to do a show that didn't really exist with a PA that didn't work, with engineers who'd never seen the instrument. We, we, we turned up with a harp, a banjo. You know, these are instruments that are not in Southeast Asian culture and just having no idea what to do in front of the gathered dignitaries of India. It was insane. It was crazy. It was memorable. 
it was scary but fun. Last question. Name three well-known people, living or dead, who you would invite around for dinner. Okay, I would have dinner with Linda Ronstadt, Jackson Brown, James Taylor. I mean, amazing musicians, interesting people, all got a story to tell. All lived a life. I figured they'd be great. They'd be great dinner guests. I'm a big fan of folk, roots and acoustic music. And I also perform in the musical field with my musical compadre, Phil Caffrey, in our duo called The Hewers. I found the rider story quite funny, actually, as it reminded me of when we were asked what we wanted in our rider. Just for the record, that very rarely happens to us. As a joke, I said that we always prefer Yorkshire tea in the dressing room. Lo and behold, a box of Yorkshire tea bags was provided. We felt like we'd hit the big time. Thanks very much to Neil for sharing his journey with us. Well, that's it for now. Thanks very much for listening. And do please share the podcast series with anyone who you feel would enjoy or gain great developmental benefit from it. Do also let me know if there are any topics or mentors you'd like to hear from in future via my email address in the show notes. Until next time, bye for now. 